Today we're going to look at how to find the surface area of a right regular hexagonal prism. So first let's check the magic formula sheet. They give us all the formulas we need and if we look for the surface area part it's HP plus 2 uppercase B and the thing that we're interested in first of all is finding that uppercase B which is the area of the base. Now if you're wondering what is this formula SA equals HP plus 2 uppercase B there is another video that I will put a link in the description for you to check it out but for now we're just gonna have to use it so uh, let's see how this works so we're gonna need that area of that regular hexagon so let's take a look at that here is a regular hexagon and um, there's some new words here perhaps so the area of this hexagon or any regular polygon is one half a p where a is the apothem and p is the perimeter of the polygon so basically what I'm discussing now is true for any regular polygon not just the hexagon so uh, I'm going to break up that polygon into its triangle so you put a point in the center well let's put it this way I have circumscribed a circle around my regular hexagon and, and um, I found the center of that circle and I drew all the radii to the vertices so I get n triangles where n is the number of sides in the polygon so since this is a hexagon I'm going to have six triangles but I could do this for any regular polygon so if I can find the area of each of those triangles area of a triangle is one half base times height so for this particular polygon inscribed in this circle it's one half the base is the s which is the length of the side of this polygon and the a is the same as h which is the apothem so one half s times a and I've used the commutative property just turn that around to one half a times s now that's one triangle in this regular polygon now there are going to be n triangles in the polygon so if I want to get the area of the entire thing I'm going to take one half a times s which is the area of one of the triangles and multiply by the number of triangles n but if you look at s times n s times n is the same as perimeter right you have s which is one side and you multiply it by the number of sides n that's perimeter so one half AP is the area of that entire polygon so that is where this formula comes from and it's going to work for any polygon any regular polygon so we're good with that so let's kind of take this further so what do we do with that I'm going to take that triangle out and kind of blow it up so we can look at it a little bit more closely here so um, I've got one of these triangles the the apothem is going to be perpendicular to that bottom side because it is an altitude and altitudes are perpendicular to the side it touches there the radii are the sides so they're going to be congruent so this is at a minimum an isosceles triangle because the two sides are congruent and then the base there is s the, the length of the side of the polygon so let's see if we can find the angles which sure we can because that vertex angle that top angle here it's 360 divided by n where n is the number of sides or number of angles and so if you look in the original picture it's a circle right so they're all going to be congruent angles in there because of these regular triangles that are created by this regular polygon so I just take 360 number of degrees in a circle and divide by the number of angles I have which is n now in the case of a hexagon n is 6 so that vertex angle is 60 now I can find the base angles because I know that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180 and that base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent so the two base angles will be the same measure so all I have to do is take that 180 subtract out the vertex that's 60 and then divide by 2 because they're going to be congruent angles so I get the two base angles to also be 60 if this had not been a hexagon if this had been any other regular polygon we would have done the same thing so if this had been an octagon you do 360 divided by 8 and you would get the vertex and then do 180 
um, minus that vertex angle, divide by two to get the other. What's unique about the hexagon is that we're getting them all to be 60 degrees, which means not only is this an isosceles triangle, it's also an equilateral triangle. So each radii is the same length as S. So that's kind of what's special about this being a hexagon and why we're focusing on it. If I now go and think about how do I get the area of this, this triangle, if I drop that altitude, which is the apothem, when you do that for any, or any isosceles triangle, it's equilateral, so it's also isosceles, you actually create two congruent triangles. So I'm creating actually two 30, 60, 90 triangles, right? And I'm gonna focus on the one on the right here. I could have focused on the one on the left, but I'm just gonna look at one of them because I wanna find A, the apothem, or the height of that triangle. So let's see what we can do here. Now, if you look at the 30, 60, 90, and you remember the rules here, the apothem is actually the longer leg of that 30, 60, 90. The side opposite the 60 degree angle is gonna be longer than the side opposite the 30 degree angle. And we learned a lot about this when we learned about right triangles. So there's a pattern here that we can use to uh, specify what the, the length is. So the longer leg is the shorter leg times the square root of three. So the shorter leg, well, that's the side opposite the 30, and I've got it outlined in blue here. And the way we find that length is we take the hypotenuse, the side opposite the 90, which is S, and we divide by 2. So the shorter leg is S over 2. So to get the apothem, the longer leg, you take that shorter leg times the square root of 3. So I take S over 2 times the square root of 3, and I just kind of combined it into one fraction there, so it's S square root 3 over 2. That's the length of the apothem. Now, before we kind of continue, I just want to point out, if this had not been a hexagon, if this had been any other regular polygon, and we didn't get this nice 30, 60, 90, uh, you would probably have to use trigonometry. So it's a little bit more complicated if you're finding the um, area of any other kind of regular polygon, but it can be done. But it's a little bit easier with the hexagon because of the 30, 60, 90 rules that help us find the apothem length without having to go to the trig. So, all right, let's continue now. The area is 1 half AP, 1 half times the apothem times perimeter, which is what we've proven before. So let's plug in our numbers here. 1 half times our apothem, S square root 3 over 2, times our perimeter, which is 6 times S. Let's think about why. Each side of this polygon is length S. It's regular. They're all S. And I've got six sides, so six times S. That's where I'm getting this. Uh, let's simplify this a little bit, reduce it. So um, if you multiply all the numerators, you get 6S times S radical 3, or 6S squared times the radical 3. Multiply the denominators, you get 4. So 6 over 4 reduces to 3S squared times the square root of 3 over 2, which is fine as it is. However, if you were to look at the formula sheet, this is the formula they give you. 3 radical 3 over 2 times s squared, which is the same thing we got, uh, just expressed slightly differently, again, using the commutative property of multiplication to throw things around. So voila, we have it. The area of a regular hexagon. 3 radical 3 over 2 times s squared. And what are we doing again? Why did we bother finding this? Oh, right, right, right. The whole purpose of this video is to find the surface area of a right regular hexagonal prism. So we went through all this pain. We need that area of a regular hexagon, but that wasn't the goal of the video. So we're going to use this 3 radical 3 over 2 S squared to actually find the surface area of a prism. Now, reminding ourselves again, the surface area formula for any uh, right prism is HP plus 2B. So H is the height of the prism, P is the perimeter of the base, and uppercase B is area of the base. So basically, if you look at what a hexagonal prism looks like, the bases are going to be these hexagons, and since this is a regular hexagonal prism, they are regular hexagons. So I want to find a surface area of something that looks like this. So let's look at an example. So I have an example here. I've got a regular uh, hexagonal prism here. The height of the prism is 20 centimeters. The side of the base, one side of the base, is 10 centimeters. So I've got my formula, SA equals HP plus 2 uppercase B. Now I've made a little note. I didn't erase it. I've kept it. Uppercase B, which is area of the base, which is area of a regular hexagon, we just went through all that pain to figure it out. It's 3 radical 3 over 2 times 
S squared, where S is the side length of one side of the hexagonal prism. So let's work on this. So H is 20, and I've got it aligned in pink there. And that is how far apart are those bases? How far apart are those two hexagons? We're told they're 20 centimeters apart. P is perimeter of the base, so outlined in that gold color. Uh, one side is 10. I've got six sides, so 10 times 6 is 60 centimeters. That will be the perimeter. And now I need to find 2 times uppercase B. So it's 2 times our uppercase B, 3 radical 3 over 2 times S squared. Now 2 times something over 2, those will cancel out. So 2B is really 3 times the square root of 3 times that S squared. Now in this example, we're told S is 10. So I'm going to substitute that in. It's 3 radical 3 times 10 squared, which is 100. So that's 300 times the square root of 3, and that's 2 of the uppercase b's. So I can now do the substitution into my formula. SA is HP plus 2B, height of the prism 20, times perimeter of the base, which is 60, plus 2 times uppercase b, which is 300 times radical 3. And at this point, I'm getting my calculator. Notice that I haven't used the calculator at all yet. I don't want to re estimate anything until I'm at the very end, and it's actually easier working with these exact values than trying to put long decimals about, you know, what is 3 radical 3 equal to. So don't do any rounding until the last possible moment, which would be now. So put it in your calculator. Be careful with the um, order of operations. That 300 radical 3 is grouped, and the 20 times 60 is grouped, and then you add them. So when you do that, you should get uh, this number, and notice our units square centimeters, because these are square units, because it's an area. And there we go, we've done it. Now, just as a little you know, for fun thing, uh, let's just talk about volume real briefly here. Uh, volume of a prism is um, uppercase B times H, area of the base times the height of the prism. We've got almost all of this here, and it's a much simpler formula, so just to, to kind of show how that works. Uh, uppercase B is 300 radical 3 over 2. Now, we use 300 radical 3 in the surface area formula. Why is this different? Well, it's different because in the surface area formula, it's 2 uppercase B. And in the volume formula, it's just B. So if 2 uppercase B is 300 radical 3, you need half of that to get 1 uppercase B. So 300 radical 3 over 2. Height is still 20. Again, carefully put that in your calculator. Um, we should get that number of cubic centimeters. And these are cubic units because it's volume. OK, so a uh, lot of stuff in here. Uh, for the most part, you're probably only interested in the last minute or so, which is showing an example of how to actually find it. I personally find it useful to kind of know where it came from. So if you want to watch that part again, great. But hopefully this will help you finding the surface area of any hexagonal prism. Thank you so much for watching.